In the last few years, more and more evidence has been discovered by the scientists that suggests that our planet Earth is actually flying through a supernova. But how can we possibly know this? Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing this new, very recent study that provides even more proof that we are indeed flying through a supernova that most likely occurred several million years ago. So let's talk a little bit more about what all of this means, and most importantly, how we know all of this. Now first of all, if you were to look from the inside of a supernova cloud, you wouldn't really be able to tell that you were inside of one. It's very challenging to see all of this simply because you would have to leave the supernova and look from the outside to realize where all of the stars are located. But there are very clever techniques and very clever ways we can discover where the sun actually is located. So first of all, we know that our solar system is flying through the region known as a local cloud. This is a pretty large region, several light years across, but we don't know what created this and we also don't really understand what and how it was created. But what we do know is that it represents a slightly higher density compared to normal vacuum and also the actual particles inside of this cloud which sometimes is also known as the local bubble, is about 7000 degrees Kelvin. But these uh, very hot particles would not really cause any damage to, for example, a spacecraft flying through this, simply because of an extremely low density. But it was always believed, although never proven, that this local cloud was indeed created by some sort of an ancient supernova. The modern calculations suggest that the solar system entered this region maybe about 44 to 150,000 years ago and is going to continue moving through this region for another 10 to maybe 20,000 years. But in order for us to understand what this could have been made from and also whether we are flying through a supernova, what we have to study are the deposits of various types of isotopes on our own planet. And one of the easiest isotopes to connect to supernova is an isotope of iron known as iron-60. Unlike more stable isotopes of iron, iron-60 has a half-life that's roughly around 2.6 million years, meaning that if we find it somewhere on the planet, it couldn't have been here from a very long time ago. It was only probably created within the last few million years. And the best known source for iron-60 is, of course, all sorts of beautiful supernova we've observed in the last few years. And in the last few years, many different studies were able to find Iron-60 in various locations and also various types of deposits on the planet. For example, this older study by the same scientist discovered the iron deposits that was roughly around 2.6 to 6 million years old, suggesting a slightly older supernova that most likely bombarded the planet, depositing all of this iron on the surface and eventually turning it into sediment. Another study from Berlin Institute of Technology produced this beautiful 3D map of the probable location of Iron-60 around the local bubble that we're being bombarded with right now, which not so long ago NASA was even able to discover in space around the planet. This was actually done by the Advanced Composition Explorer that's still active and working in space right now. And the most recent paper was able to discover Iron-60 inside of 33,000-year-old deposits that were collected from deep-sea sediments, which of course also suggests that the planet even back then was already bombarded by Iron-60. And all of these recent papers indicate that for the past 33,000 years at least, we've been traveling through this unusual region where a very large and a very powerful supernova occurred, the supernova that most likely also influenced the conditions on our planet at least to some extent. Now we know that the supernova here occurred within the last 15 million years because any iron 60 mostly disappears completely within 15 million years. So this large cloud that Earth is traveling through right now is only a few million years old and possibly even a few thousand years old. And this is actually where the scientists currently are not entirely certain. For example, one of the recent studies from Antarctica discovered that there's also a little bit more of this iron 60 that was deposited here only a few decades ago, and all of the ice core samples from the last 20 to 30 years contained a little bit of iron 60 in them as well. In other words, we know that this is sort of a continuous process that has been going on for at least some time now. But right now what we don't know is whether it's connected to these samples from 33,000 years ago and to the samples from a few million years ago. And although it's quite possible that the local bubble or the local cloud is indeed responsible for these detections, and it's also possibly 
produced by some sort of an ancient supernova, there's still a chance that there is something else going on that's not related to the local cloud at all. And that's one of the questions these scientists want to try to answer. One of the major ways we can discover the answer to all of this is by looking for even older samples, something older than 40,000 years old. And if we do discover iron-60 in these samples as well, and most importantly if there's even more iron-60 in these older samples, it only suggests that the local bubble is probably not related to this and that another supernova occurred anywhere from 40,000 to possibly 100,000 years ago and we're sort of now traveling through that particular region. However, if more recent samples from about now up to about 30,000 years have a lot of iron-60 way more than in the older sample, the only reasonable explanation here is that by moving through the local bubble, we're now experiencing more iron-60, which of course means that the local bubble is indeed a supernova remnant. Which also might lead to some new investigations in regards to how this local bubble affects the conditions on our planet and how it might even affect the climatic changes as well. Right now we obviously have no idea what happens to stars and of course planets as they move through supernova remnants, but this is something that we would love to learn more about, especially if it's actually something that's affecting our planet right now. And chances are in the next 10 years or so we're going to have a final answer to all of this as we discover more samples and as we learn more about the unusual mysterious Iron 60 that's bombarding our planet and has been doing so for at least 30,000 years now. So it's most likely definitely related to some kind of a supernova, we're just not entirely sure which one and where all of this iron is coming from. It could actually have other sources as well, but that has to be discovered just so we can understand how all of this affects the planet. Until we learn more or until we discover something else about this sample from 30,000 years ago, that is all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out the papers I mentioned in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support the channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.